I see that a lot. And I understand that that's coming from those old days of those old ways that you do, you don't talk, you don't ask, you just do what's told to you. So because my mother was an educator, I looked at my teachers, how they were saying things to me and why and when. What was the tone? What was the look in their, in their eyes when they spoke to me? These things were very important to me to receive the information I needed. So now as a teacher, I see this all going on and I was thinking to myself, okay, what is the best thing I could do to help people? Whether or not they, they want to realize a professional career isn't important to me. It's more about them finding out who they are, what makes them tick and what makes them happy and that they have an experience in the studio that is one where they're learning something about classical ballet with some of the gyrotonic philosophies because they do apply very much so in classical ballet and how to keep it authentic and just have a good time. Walk away going, I've accomplished one or two things. I really accomplished them. I don't need to do everything all at once. That's too much. You can't eat the whole cake in one bite, right? <laughs> and so as a teacher, I try to give this to the dancers as well. It's just calm down and remember that everything is a process. I went through probably a very bizarre process as a ballerina <laughs> that a lot of people haven't gone through. And maybe that's what makes what I do a little bit different than other teachers. But I do believe that if more organizations, large ones in particular, would take the time to invest in their teachers to get them to calm down, because a lot of them aren't so calm. A lot of them have this pressure as well. I've got to get this syllabus out. I've got to get, I got to, I got to, I got to. What are their priorities for these people? And how do you help them to help the students best? It's always going to start from the top and trickle down. And so in my